so today I'm going to do a book review video. I know I haven't done any videos in a while just because I've been sick and today was kind of a lazy day because it's snowing outside and they weren't really calling for snow in the forecast and it's really cold and it's just a lazy day to stay inside so I decided I finished um, a book and I just say, you know, I have a lot of books piled up, so I'm going to do this book review video. I have seven book review videos, and I'm going to save the best book for last. Well, if you like what it's about, I guess. So, this one is <clears throat> a Harlequin book. Harlequin books are like a hit or miss for me. Like, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're okay. And um, this is a... This is a Harlequin Love-inspired historical book. You know, now they have all these, like, different genres of, of um, Harlequin books. And this is called Wedded for the Baby. It's the series Stand-In Brides. And it's by Dorothy Clark. Clark, this is what it looks like. So what this book basically was about was this woman gets this um, baby from its mother because they met on the train. And she died on the train because she was really sick. And she was supposed to go to this city, um, this up and this up and coming city that they were building because she was going to marry this guy, because this guy needed a wife because the town mayor or head honcho of the town said he needs to be married or he's going to lose his apothecary shop. So instead of marrying the girl that died, he goes with the flow and says, "Hey, you're here." Why don't you marry me and I'll work something out where eventually I'll get somebody else to marry or whatever. But in the end, they end up falling in love and taking care of this baby. I mean, it was a really cute um, book, but I don't know. Like, sometimes with I don't really like the historical novels just because I really not... I mean, I like history and stuff, but I just don't like it when it's like... It's not really about, like, history. It's just about a romance kind of thing. I don't know. So, this <coughs> author has, um, some funny books which are about, um, they have, like, punny or pun, um, pun titles. And I read a lot of her books before, um, in a book review video. I don't know which book review video it was. It was, like, from last year, I think. Or maybe it was from this year. I can't remember. And her name's Donna Andrews, and usually her books have, like, something to do with, like, there's, like, some kind of animal in it. I remember one time there was one about, um, all, it was All's Well That Ends Well, like, like the Shakespeare play, All's Well That Ends Well, except it has owls instead of alls in it. And this one is another punny title. It's called No Nest for the Wicked. It's obviously a play on words for No Rest for the Wicked. And it's a Meg Lanslow mystery. This is what it looks like. And her books are kind of funny. It's basically, um, <clears throat> Meg is in this, she's playing croquet in this, well, extreme croquet in this cow pasture because it's supposed to be extreme so they're doing it in cow pastures where sometimes the cows if they're standing up I don't know how you really play croquet you know you have to whack the mallet and the ball and get them through like those little holes or whatever and they use the cows too and while they're playing extreme croquet they know um, Meg falls and she discovers a dead body and she has to figure out who killed this woman and who she is and why nobody knows who she is and everything before um the extreme co yeah the extreme croquet tournament starts and it's just a really funny book her books are really funny i mean it is supposed to be like a mystery but it has like the extreme funniness and stuff it's really cool so this was the last book I just finished, like, literally 45, not 45 minutes ago, but like 15 or 20 minutes ago. It's a Debbie <coughs> May, Comber, May Comber book. I don't know if that's how you say her last name. Um, it's called The Blossom Street Brides. It's a Blossom Street novel. And I've read one book that wasn't in the Blossom Street series, but this one is. 
I mean, the, the most of them that I've read have come from the Blossom Street series of books, and then, like, one or two that I've read in the past were, like, different kinds. But I really like this series. I think it's because I always wanted... It's about this, like, um, small town, and blo it takes place on Blossom Street with this... It centers around, like, this um, shop called A Good Yarn, and it's about knitting, and I think it's because I always wanted to try and knit, but I'm, like, one of those people that I want to try it, but I know I'm probably not going to be good at it, you know? I don't know. Sorry if my hair is a little wonky. It's Like I said, it's been, like, a lazy day. So this is called The Blossom Street Br Brides. This is what it looks like. It's a hardback book. And this book was good. Um, it's about, it takes, it's still on Blossom Street, and it's about these women who are either, um... They've get, they got out of difficult relationships. The owner of the Good Yarn is dealing with a problem with her mother who lives in a nursing home because she has dementia, Alzheimer's, and she's dealing with her adopted daughter um, problems. And this other lady um, just got out of a relationship that she's been in for like a couple years and her daughter doesn't like her being with this new guy that she just married because they live in different states because he works in a different place because of his work and she works in a different place because of her work. And then um, the one girl's, um, the one woman's daughter gets pregnant by this farmer guy that's like a couple years older than her and she's, she's worried that her daughter's going to make the same mistakes that she did when she was in that kind of situation. It's a really cool um, book. I always like books that have, like, um, they're, like, they center around, like, four or five different women or people, and then they all solve, like, the problems by the end of the book. I kind of like that kind of stuff. It was a really good book. And the Blossom Street series is really good. Like, I know it goes in some kind of order, but I usually just read them as I get them because I don't really, can't, I can't really get them unless I get them in, like, book sales and stuff. So this book was a really really weird book. It's called, I don't know how you say this person's last name, so if I say it wrong, I apologize. And I don't know how to say the author's last name. But this is called Aunt Demity Detective, and it's by Nancy a Antherton, I guess. I don't know. And, um, it is, I, maybe if I, if this is, I mean, this is a, this is probably a series of books and maybe if I read the series, I mean, I just bought this, I just got this book at, like, a book sale that was, I mean, a library book sale that was, like, $20 a bag. Um, I, and this was the only book, so I didn't, like, I, sometimes, like, when you read, you know, like, when you have a series of books that, you know, like, mystery books that have a certain order, so I'm like, sometimes you can just read them, and it doesn't affect how you read them, like, if they're still good, and then other series, like, you have to read them in order and stuff like that. Well, this is a book that you probably have to read in order. But, um, a series that you have to read in order. This is what it looks like. And it's basically about this woman whose aunt, um, <clears throat> this woman in this small town in England dies. And, um, nobody in the town really likes her. She was really mean and stuff, so people didn't really care. But this woman wanted to know why she died or who killed her or whatever. And Aunt Demitty, the detective, is actually, a, like, I guess you could say, like, a ghost or a presence in this journal she has. This woman has this journal that Aunt Demitty is in. I guess it's her aunt. I'm not really sure. And she talks through the mystery or what's going on in the book through this presence that's in this, um journal and this journal like talks to her through like you know it, like writes or something in the book and she like I don't know it's really weird and the way this woman dies is really weird too it's really weird it wasn't it wasn't um I'll say that it wasn't a person that murdered this woman yeah it was a really weird kind of book. Okay, so this, this, uh, these two books I'm going to show you next are books that belong in a series. It was, I always wanted to read these books because I love the Lifetime, oh no, the Hallmark, sorry, 
I always watch one of those two channels. The Hallmark channel, um, Chesapeake Shores. If you haven't watched Chesapeake Shores, you should. It is, like, a great, great, great series. I really like it. The season, season two ended in October, and I think you can, you can probably catch up on it, like, on demand or, um, like on Netflix or whatever, I don't know. And they're based on the novels by Cheryl Woods. And these books go in a certain order, so you have to read them in order. I, I have a couple of them, so luckily I have the couple that I can read, like, right away. I have, like, the first four, I think, four or five. So this is the... F now, the one thing that's really weird is, is these books... Well, first of all, each book is about one of the family members in the O'Brien family. And it, it, there's, like, a couple, there's, like, it's usually, um, these books, they have, like, one or two, they have, like, a big main problem, and then they have one or two sub, like, supplemental problems or, like, minor problems or something, I would call them. But, um, the one thing that's different is, is these books are way different than the show is. So it's not like if you watch the show first and then you read the books, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, like I already know what, like these books are really, really, really different compared to the, um, the TV show. So this one is called The Inn at Eagle Point. It's a Chesapeake Shores novel. It's the first book in the series. And this is what it looks like. <clears throat> and this centers around... Abby, and as you know, if you watch the series, Abby comes back to Chesapeake Shores originally to help her sister Jess because she's having problems with the loan from the bank for the inn that she wants to open up, and she wants to do all of her all herself because she doesn't want her dad's help or anybody's help because she wants people to know that she doesn't need anybody's help. She wants to be independent, and this is where she um, finds out that Trace, the her ex lover um is still in Chesapeake Shores and she gets involved with him and then the second um problem that appears in the book is is um their mother who left them when they were very young um comes back for Jess's opening but she comes back a few days before and it's kind of awkward between her, their mom and their dad and stuff like that and I'm not going to really get into because there is a surprise at the end of this book um, that I don't want to um, say. It doesn't. It's 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 because it doesn't. It, like I said, these don't. They're not like the show. But what? Like I feel like though. Like what happens at the end of this book probably is what's gonna happen like at the end of the show or like in another season or two of the show. So this is the second book in the series. It's by Cheryl Woods. It's called Flowers on Main. And this is what it looks like. And it's about uh, the, another sister, Brie, who comes back to Chesapeake Shores because her plays, she's a playwriter in Chicago, and her, her last couple of plays have bombed at the theater. So she decides to come back to Chesapeake Shores. And in the process, she learns that she has this... Um, she learns that her ex-lover from her past is still there, and he hates her because of what happened before she left Chicago, before she left to go to Chicago. And, um, this, the problem that they have is, is about the situation that happened a long time ago. I don't want to get into it because it's really, really good. And you don't really get into it until, like, the middle of the book, too, anyway. And, but in the process, she decides, um, she's going to open up this flower store because, um, Jess had this issue at the inn where the arrange, the arranger of the flowers that she got for this person's wedding at her inn didn't show up. And then she got, gets, in, the Brie gets inspired and she makes these beautiful arrangements and that's what makes her decide, okay, I'm going to do this for, um, a career, and she opens up this flower store, and in the process, it gets intertwined with her ex-lover, too. And then the other um, thing is, is Kevin comes back. Kevin is one of their brothers from Iraq, and he's married to this woman that the sisters really don't understand why they got married really quick, and all this other stuff. 
And another problem in the book is, is Mick, their dad, um, decides he really wants to try and get back together with their mother, but their mother doesn't really see that as a possibility because of she thinks he's going to go back to his old ways, but he's trying to convince her that he's changed. So the last book I have is the book I'm really excited about. i seen this on um, Facebook, the Scholastic... Um, the Scholastic, the Scholastic um, Facebook page. And um, Scholastic is like... Um, this thing, like, we used to get in elementary school, is like, this paper magazine where you can get, like, all these different books, and you, like, your parents paid for them, and then you got them in school or whatever, and stuff like It was, like, basically you got, like, free books, um, because you didn't have to, like, go to, like, a bookstore or something to do it. I don't know. But it was just in, like, elementary school, and then you didn't get that in, like, high school or junior high or anything. But that's how I got, like, a lot of my books when I was a little kid. And, um, Scholastics had this announcement saying that the British Library is going to publish these books, um, the Harry Potter, uh, Journey Through a History of Magic, because it's been 20 years since J.K. Rowling published, um, The Philosopher's Stone, which is the British version of, um, Sorcerer's Stone in the States, and I don't know if that's, like, around the world, I don't know. But this is what it looks like, you guys. It is so cool. And I am like a Harry Potter fanatic. Like, I watch it every time it comes on TV. I have all the books, all the um, DVDs. I have the Fantastic Beast stuff. I have, like, little Funko Pop figurines. I have, it's just, I'm like a Harry Potter fanatic. I really am. And when I see Harry Potter stuff, I get super, super, super excited. This world, like, I can't tell if you can see it because it covers up my head. It's a big book. And it basically it has a lot of different artwork, artwork in it by the guy who illustrates the um, illustrated versions of the books. Um, Jim, is it Jim K, K? Or I think it's Jim K. I can't really tell because it, the J kind of looks like a T. I think it's Jim K. He illustrates all of the books um, now where he's they're making them into, like... I guess they're making them into, like, illustrated versions for, like, like to get little, like, maybe littler kids into Harry Potter. And it's basically, it goes through the different kinds of courses that they have in Hogwarts. And it goes through the different professors, too, like, there's div divination, the dark arts, um, potions, um, stuff like that. And... <clears throat> I really like it. And then there's, like, some illustrations from the first two of the illustrated Harry Potter books. And it's just, I just really like it. And there's some, like, rough cuts of the book, like, when she first started the book. There's, like, places, like, there's this one about a deleted um, chapter on the Mer people from Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. It's a really good like, I really enjoyed it. I read it in, like, a day because I was so excited. Um, so that was my book review video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Comment below and tell me if you read this book from the British Library. Um, and that's about it. So please subscribe. I'll see you guys next time with another video and hope you guys have a wonderful day.